Okay, you guys, so I wanted to do a quick video about this blue moon that is going to happen tonight on Halloween night of 2020. And this is the first time that this has happened in like over 70 years. I think it was like 76 years. That's huge. And God tells us in Genesis when he created the heavens and the moon and the sun and the stars that they are meant for signs. And I think that this is a huge sign to us about the times we're living and the fact that this is happening on Halloween night is huge and I'm going to tell you why. So I got to thinking about this blue moon and I realized that the blue part of it, okay, the, the moon is not actually going to be blue. Let me just say that. That is just a phrase that they call this moon because it rarely happens, okay? So that's why they call it the blue moon. It's not going to be the color blue. But the fact that, that it is called the blue moon, it's, it's called that for a reason. I feel like God uses these things to point things out to us. So I was thinking about the color blue and its biblical meaning. So I got to doing some research and the color blue means divine and holy, set apart, and the commandments of God, what he commands of us. I think that's so huge that this is happening on Halloween, which Halloween is an evil pagan holiday and it has evil roots. It's based around the evil presence, the evil spirits, and it's about the dead and witchcraft and it's just, it's, it's really evil. People don't understand when they celebrate Halloween that it's a pagan holiday and it goes against the word of God. And I'm going to show you a few scriptures that validate that. I'm not just saying that because of my own opinion. That I'm saying that because it's in the word of God. That we are to have no fellowship with the works of darkness. And that's what Halloween is. I, I feel like it's Satan's holiday. And the fact that this blue moon is going to be lighting up the sky like a spotlight on Halloween night, I feel like it's a, it's a signal to God's people, to us Christians, that we should not be celebrating Halloween. And especially now with how the world is, people think that good is evil and evil is good. And it's sad. And Satan has his claws so deep into society that people don't even realize what they're doing. Only this year did I realize what I was doing. I used to, if you asked me a year ago what my favorite holiday was, I would have told you it was Halloween. I used to love it. I, I can't even tell you the, the parties I've been to, the Halloween parties I've been to. And I mean, I used to dress up as with devil horns and stuff like God has changed me and I called myself a Christian when I did those things and looking back at it now it makes me cringe to think that I really did that and I still proclaimed the name of God in the name of Jesus it's I can't even believe that I did that but it happens every year and even on days that aren't Halloween, but this video is about Halloween, so we're going to stick with that, but God has opened my eyes to so many things this year, and I know it's because we're in the end times, and God is pouring out His Spirit on his, on all flesh. Even even people who don't believe are, are, they know something's up. They know that 
this year's different. I was talking to my mom about this, actually. She's like my best friend, and I tell her everything. Every time I make a discovery about something or God reveals something to me, I go to her. So I was telling her about this blue meaning that I found and how it relates to God's commandments. And she told me that she had heard before that the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses was actually written on blue sapphire stone. And I got to looking into that, and it's true, and it mentions of it in the Bible. And I'm going to show you those scriptures. And I think that's so cool that the Ten Commandments were written on blue sapphire so just remember that tonight as you go about whatever you have planned and if you do have Halloween parties or something like that planned I hope that this video convicts you and and I'm, I mean it's your choice what you choose to do I'm not judging anyone I just I know that that's what God's put in my heart and I'm not celebrating Halloween this year or ever again because I, I see clearly now what the holiday is and I hope that you will too um, you know it also says in Hosea that it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and I feel like that was me every year up until now I had a lack of knowledge of what the Halloween holiday if you want to call it that really was and God revealed it to me so I no longer have that excuse of, you know, I just didn't know. And even if you don't know, that's still not an excuse because it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So it is our job to search out the truth and to be able to discern good and evil and not be like the world in the last days that call evil good and good evil. But I hope this message has helped you. I wanted to keep this short and sweet. Um, but just remember that pagan holidays are not something we should celebrate. In Exodus 24 verses 10 through 12, it says, And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were the body of heaven in his clearness. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. Also they saw God, and did eat and drink. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come up to me into the mount, and be there, and I will give thee tables of stone, and a law, and commandments which I have written, that thou mayest teach them. So as you see here, in verse 10, it speaks of them, it speaks that they saw God, and under his feet was paved work of sapphire stone. So the blue sapphire stone. And then in the a couple of verses down in verse 12, it says that he gave uh, Moses the Ten Commandments, the law um, of stone with the commandments on it. And it makes sense for it to be out of the same stone that they saw, which is the sapphire stone. And that's why it's believed that um, the commandments were written on sapphire stone. They were written by God. Here's another scripture that speaks of the blue um, and how it means commandments. Numbers 15, 38 through 40. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring, that ye may remember and do all my commandments, and be holy unto your God. And this is exactly what I was saying about on Halloween night, how we should look up at that moon and know that it's the blue moon. 
And that blue stands for being holy and remembering God's commandments. And be set apart from the world that's running around, whoring around, as it says in the scripture. And just being a slave to sin and doing things that are unpleasing to God. We need to remember his commandments and be holy, not only on this day, but every day. But I think that this is a huge sign to his people for this day, because this day is evil. And I think we're in the last days, and I feel like God is really trying to wake his people up and make people see the truth of what evil is in the world and has been intertwined in our society that we've so easily overlooked all these other years. This is a scripture in Ephesians 5 verse 11. It says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, or in other words, expose them. And that's what I'm doing with this video. It needs to be said, and I know I'm going to have some backlash over this, and there's so many Christians that still celebrate Halloween. And like I said, I was one of them for years until this year. This is a verse in Zephaniah 1.8. And I'm not saying this is about Halloween, but it sure does seem like it um, when you read it. It could be referring to the foreign apparel of um no longer being clothed in righteousness because we are supposed to be clothed in righteousness. Um, so it could be referring to that, but I, I find this interesting that the Lord showed me this um, verse during this time of the year, but it says, and it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel find that very interesting. Um, you take it as you wish, but I had to show it to you because God laid it on my heart. I just wanted to show you really quick. This is a um, website that gives you a little bit of the history behind Halloween. The tradition originated with the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. When people would light bonfires and wear costumes to ward off ghosts, in the 8th century, Pope Gregory III designed November 1st as a time to honor all saints. Soon, All Saints Day incorporated some of the traditions of Samhain. The evening before was known as All Hallows Eve, and later Halloween over time. Halloween evolved into a day of activity like trick-or-treating, carving jack-o'-lanterns, festive gatherings, donning costumes and eating treats. Halloween's origins date back to the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain. The Celts who lived 2,000 years ago, mostly in the area that is now Ireland, the United Kingdom, and Northern France. Hmm, interesting. If you've seen my video about who I think the Antichrist is, he is the president of France, celebrated their new year on November 1st. This day marked the end of the summer and the harvest, which is the beginning of the dark, cold winter. <laughs> you guys, the harvest, the end of summer, that's all in scripture, and the fact that it says the beginning of a dark winter. I know you guys have probably seen all of the stuff going viral about Biden's speech about the dark winter. A time of year that was often associated with human death. Celts believed that on the night before New Year, the New Year, the boundary between the worlds of the living and the dead became blurred. On a Halloween night, they celebrated Samhain when it was believed that the ghost of the dead returned to the earth. In addition to causing trouble and damaging crops, Celts thought that the presence of the otherworldly spirits made it easier for the Druids or Celtic priests to make predictions about the future. For a people entirely dependent on the vo volatile natural world, these prophecies were an important source of comfort during the long dark winter. 
So you can read more on this. I'll put the link in the description, but I wanted to show you something up here. Let's go to the Samhain and I want to read to you about it. Samhain is a pagan religious festival originating from an ancient Celtic spiritual tradition. In modern times, Samhain is usually celebrated from October 31st to November the 1st to November 1st to welcome in the harvest and usher in the dark half of the year. Celebrants believe that the barriers between the physical world and spirit world will break down. Ancient Celts marked Samhain as the most significant of the four quarterly fire festivals taking place at the midpoint between the fall equinox and the winter solstice. During this time of year, hearth fires in Family homes were left to burn out while the harvest was gathered. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> the harvest was gathered. After the harvest work was complete, celebrants joined with Druid priests to light a community fire using a wheel that would cause friction and spark flames. The wheel was considered a presentation of the sun and used along with prayer. Cattle were sacrificed and per participants took a flame from the communal bonfire back to their home to relight the hearth. Hearth, I don't know if I'm saying that right. You get the point. Early texts present Samhain as a mandatory celebration lasting three days and three nights. Wow. That's interesting. Three days and three nights because Jesus um, rose on the third day. Satan just twists, he perverts everything. It's sickening what he does. And people still allow it in the world. It says, it lasted three days where they, the community was required to show themselves to local kings or chieftains. Failure to participate was believed to result in punishment from the gods, usually illness or death. There was also a military aspect in Ireland with holiday thrones prepared for Commanders of soldiers. Come on now. So I'll let you read more of this. I'm not going to get into it anymore, but I find it very interesting. All this stuff lines up with what is happening in the world and with the harvest and <laughs> the harvest of souls, I guess you could say. So Lord is going to come back and harvest his people. And we need to be ready. This is what I found when I started looking up the biblical meaning of blue. It says, um, Moses, Aaron, and two of Aaron's sons and the 70 elders of Israel went up Mount Sinai to worship God before he gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments in stone, which is Exodus 24. The Bible states that they not only saw God, but also noticed that under his feet was some sort of pavement made of sapphires. And they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of sapphire stone, and as it were, the heavens in clearness, Exodus 24.10. Sapphires, one of the many gemstones mentioned in scripture, is referenced nine times in God's word. The gem reflects a beautiful sky color. Sapphires are also found on the breastplate of judgment, sometimes worn by the high priest, Exodus 28:18. The blue gem was one of several that God personally placed as ornamentation on Lucifer when he created him, Ezekiel 28:13. This stone, according to the Bible, will soon be used to decorate one of the 12 foundations God will create for the new Jerusalem. Revelation 21, 19. Ezekiel 10, verse 1. It says, Then I looked, and behold, in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, as it were a sapphire stone, as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. And... Also, going back to um, God cutting out the um, Ten Commandments from the Sapphire Stone, um, it's been said that it could have been his throne uh, that he did that from. So I thought that was cool that it says that in this scripture, um, that it was the likeness of a throne. 
This is another one uh, that was Ezekiel 10.1. So in Ezekiel uh, 1.26, And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. This is um, another thing God revealed to me in my search. And it was a website that gave um, biblical meanings um, of the colors and the scriptures that go with them. And um, this is the blue, light and royal blue. So the light blue represents heaven, the Holy Spirit, divinity, serenity, and revelation, which I thought was very interesting considering the times we're living in. The royal blue also means revelation and authority, kingship, priesthood, and faithfulness, which I also love because if you've seen some of my other videos, um, the one about rapture, I explained how when he was speaking to the faithful church, he gave them an open door and said, come up here. So I thought that was interesting. Um, could this be a sign that God is trying to warn us that we have to keep his commandments and be holy and set apart from the world? And that maybe rapture is very, very soon and we need to be ready. We need to be clothing ourselves in righteousness and not strange apparel.